The Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 8. The Terrible Threats of the Living Brain. In the senior science class at Midtown High School, two men wheel a strange-looking machine into the classroom. Right there, in the center of the room, gentlemen. Wow, what a creepy-looking gizmo that is. That gizmo happens to be one of the scientific marvels of the age, loudmouth. Well, well, listen to Peter Parker, the demon scientist. You sure talk big and brave when the teacher's around, eh, puny Parker? Look out, you dumb clown. My glasses. Okay, okay, don't make a federal case out of it. It was an accident. You're the only accident around here, you clumsy meathead. I oughta... You oughta what, weakling? Boys, keep your voices down. Remember, you're still in class. Okay, Liz, but Flash has gone too far this time. Look, Scarecrow, we'll see if you still talk so big after class. Just hang around, ugly. You've got a little surprise coming. I've had it. I'm through pretending to be a panty waste to conceal my real identity. I don't need those specs anyway. Uh-oh, Mr. Warren's calling the class to order. Attention class, we have an important treat for you today. The ICM Corporation is exhibiting its newest electronic computer around the country, and today is our turn to have a demonstration of this great machine. And now, I will introduce Mr. Petty of ICM, the International Computing Machines Corporation, who will explain the machine. You'd be better off if they introduced a doctor after I'm done with you. Uh, give your jaw a rest while you can before I fracture it. Thank you for your introduction, Mr. Warden. And now, class, we built our computer in the form of a human body in order to dramatize its powers. It is the greatest mechanical brain ever built. In fact, we call it the living brain. Notice how its legs have ball-bearing rollers on them, enabling the brain to move upon command. And its arms are so constructed that they too could perform simple motions. But the most important thing about the brain, of course, is its ability to think. It contains more knowledge than any other brain on Earth, human or mechanical. It will answer any question which is fed to it, basing its answer on the vast storehouse of information which it possesses. And unlike the human brain, it never forgets a thing. Now, Mr. Warren, would you select a student to assist me, please? Peter Parker is our top science student. Parker, will you step up here for a moment? I'll be glad to, sir. Sure you'd be glad to. How does it feel to be a professional teacher's pet? Quiet, Flash. Let's see what they want Pete to do. Moments later... Now that I've explained the brain's operation to you, let's see you... Say, you learn pretty quickly, son. Thanks, Mr. Petty. Actually, I've read a lot about the electronic brains. I've always been real interested in them. Now, class, you think of a question for the living brain, and then Parker will feed it to him and see if he can answer it. Did you hear him call the brain he like it was a real person? It's smarter than any real person. It could figure out a horse race winners, elections, anything. We could get rich if we owned it. What should we ask of the brain? Gosh, I don't know. What do you think? Search me. Got any ideas, Liz? Yes, I thought of something everybody would like to know. Let's see how smart the brain really is. What is Spider-Man's real identity? Hey, that's terrific. What a great question. This is terrible. What if the brain is smart enough to answer that? What'll I do? Impossible as that question seems, if the living brain is fed enough information about Spider-Man, he might be able to answer it. And so, the class calls out all the facts that they can think of about the costumed mystery man. He's about 5 feet 10 inches tall. He's about 160 pounds. He's been sighted in the Forest Hills area a lot. He's the most wonderful, heroic, glamorous man in the whole world. If you ask me, he's a neurotic nut. Then, after all the available facts have been gathered, Peter feeds them to the brain in the form of mathematical symbols. I've reduced all the known information about Spider-Man to a form which the brain can absorb. S so here it goes. Don't be nervous, Parker. With all the facts you're feeding it, the brain has a very good chance of solving the problem of Spider-Man's real identity. I know it. That's what I'm nervous about. Uh-oh. The brain is signaling. The answer is ready. Boy, it sure didn't take long. Very well, Parker. As you can tell by that winking light, the answer is ready for you. You may take it out now. Yes, so, so I see. I, I'll get it. 
As you know, the answer is given in the form of mathematical code symbols. It'll be up to you to translate them overnight, Parker. Phew, good. At least that'll give me time to try to think of something. Meanwhile, the two attendants are making clouds of their own. Then it's a deal. First chance we get, we steal the brain. We'll make a fortune out of it and skip to some other country. And at that moment... Let me have that paper, Parker. You're too weak to take care of something that valuable. I'll decode it. Get your grubby hands off this, Thompson. You couldn't decode your own name unless someone spelled it out for you. You heard me, bird brain. Give me that paper. Well, well, so the worm turns, eh? And in your case, I do mean worm. All right, you two, break it up. And I mean right now. Yes, sir. Sorry, Mr. Warren. I've had my eye on you two for a while now. If you both are such enemies, I suggest you settle your feud once and for all in the gym. It's a deal. Suits me just fine. And so, after class... Or Parker, this is one time you couldn't get out of a fight, huh? Well, don't worry, String Bean, it won't last long. You'll never know what hit ya. The only thing I'm worried about is being able to pull my punches enough so I don't really clobber that bag of wind. Anyway, everyone forgot about the paper with Spider-Man's identity on it. Don't end it too soon, Flash Boy. Give us a little show, huh? Don't you worry, it's taken months to get Parker to agree to fight. After waiting so long, I want to really enjoy this. Don't be too rough on him, Flash. He can't help it if he's not the she-man that you are. What round will you finish him off in, Flash? You mean one minute of the first round. Are you gonna tie one hand behind you, Flash Boy? I'll referee the fight, boys. Are you both ready? Poor Parker. Not one student is rooting for him. I wish by some miracle that he could. But no, he hasn't a chance. Finally, the fight begins. Pete's spider instinct of lightning fast reflexes enable him to move away from Flash's blows for the split second that Flash begins to throw them. But to the watching students, it looks as though... Parker's a coward. Look at him, staying out of Flash's reach. I avoid Flash's swing so fast that the others think I'm just staying out of range. My reflexes are too good. Come on and fight, Chicken Parker. I'll pull my punch as much as I can now. He doesn't realize that to me, he seems to be moving in slow motion. There, I put only the smallest fraction of my power into that blow. Holy cow, did you see that? I'm not sure. It, it happened so fast, it was like a blur to me. This is what I've always feared. Even though I could hit him as easily as I could, it was still too hard. Pretty clever, eh, Flash? You're just, uh, clowning around. J trying to make Parker think he's a powerhouse before you finish him off, huh? Huh? Oh yeah, sure, that that's what I'm doing. Just trying to have a few laughs before I clobber him. But, despite his brave words, Flash Thompson approaches his foe with far more caution than before. It must have been a lucky punch, but... But how did he knock me clean through the ropes? It all happened so fast, yeah, I, I probably tripped, sure, that must be it. I just tripped over the ropes. Meanwhile, the floor above, we find the two technicians alone with a giant computing machine. Now's our chance to take this meal ticket and cut out of here. Right, most everybody's down in the gym watching the fight. But there is one man who is not watching the fight. Wait, where are you two going with the brain? It's Petty. We've got to shut him up fast. There, by the time he wakes up, we'll be gone. Hey, look out. You made me bump into the brain's control panel. Oh no, I must have short-circuited it. Look, it's moving by itself. It, it never did that before. It's coming towards us, as though it wants to harm us. Uh, how do we stop it? We can't stop it and can't get near it while its arms are swinging that way. Anything can happen now. Let's get out of here. Well, we can. It keeps blocking the exits. I'd swear it doesn't want us to leave. With its strength and its intelligence, nothing can stop it if it's on a rampage. But suddenly, the living brain takes a random turn and... Look, it... It's the giant computing machine. But nobody's controlling it. It's running wild. Stay clear of those swinging arms. While in the gym below, the fight goes on. Come on, Flash Boy, you've carried him long enough. Give him the old one-two now. Nah, let me prolong the agony a little longer. I'm trying to finish him off, but I can't. I don't get it. He dodges every punch without even trying. Okay, Loudmouth, the fun's over. Now you're going to learn a lesson you'll never forget. I've finally figured out how to hit him without splattering him all over the gym. I'll just swat him by flipping my wrist instead of my whole arm. Here it comes, Flash. Now smile. I want to remember you as you look right now. But just then, a frantic cry rings out, and Flash automatically turns his head in the direction of the sound. Help, the brain is out of control, help. I can't stop my blow.
That did it, but but if only he hadn't turned his head. Boo, you hit him when he turned his head. That was a foul. That was a crummy thing to do, Parker. Poor Flash wasn't even looking. Out of a moment. Mr. Petty! Where's Mr. Petty? He's the only one who can do anything. The living brain is running amok, and no one knows how to stop it. I'll bring Flash to the locker room. He'll be okay just to have the wind knocked out of him. And then Spider-Man better see what's going on upstairs. Exactly 30 seconds later. I don't see how the brain could go out of control, unless it was tampered with. Anyway, how can an electronic thinking machine cause such alarm? I'm sure it's just sizzle and spider webs. Look at that! No wonder they're scared. Run, run, the brain's getting closer. Nothing can stop it, it's trying to catch us all. Look, there's Spider-Man, maybe he can do something. Keep running, all of you, all take over now. It's like a huge and vulnerable engine of destruction. Perhaps I can land on top of it from the ceiling. I made it. Ow, I forgot the machine can think in its own fashion. It swatted me off as easy as pie. Somersaulting in midair, the agile Spider-Man regains his balance and lands lightly on his feet as the rampaging machine continues to rumble down the hall. I've got to get ahead of it and warn the other kids to run to safety. Clear out of here. All of you, hurry, look on the wall, it's Spider-Man. Do as he says, run for the exit, quickly. And now I can concentrate on the brain. I'll try to slow him down with the quick-forming web. It worked, it's stopping him. He's grasping the web, I, I could swear he's testing it, analyzing its strength. I hear his gears moving, as though he's deciding how much pressure to apply. Ah, uh, that's impossible, he can't break my web. But the mighty machine plows through the deceptively strong webbing as though it doesn't exist. Phew, he's stronger than I thought. I have to try something else. First, I'll test his thinking ability. I'll let him hear me running. Then I'll see what he does. He does think, like a human. At the sound of my footsteps, he turned. He's extending his arm, striking at me, as a man would. And he's fast, faster than I would have guessed. He knows I'm an enemy. He's after me. I've got to stay out of reach of those powerful arms. Oh no, the brain figured out my speed and increased his own enough to overtake me. He outmaneuvered me. He really is the fastest thinking machine on earth. I, I'm trapped. But although he can't outthink a human, he can't outguess one. If I can make an unexpected move like this, but he'll remember that maneuver. I'll never be able to trick him with that one again. I've got to keep leaping from wall to wall, changing my motion pattern all the time. If I repeat any action, he'll remember it and get me. More kids. I thought they were all safely out. Turn around. Run. The living brain is right behind me. But but the exit door is jammed. We can't open it. There. Now scatter. Hurry. Wow, did you see that? He pulled that lock apart like it was paper. The kids are all safe now, but I've got to remain. i got to stop the living... Say, where is it? Where did it go? I don't like this. It's too cunning. I mustn't forget that even though it's only a machine, it thinks like a man. It's planning a trap for me. And a few seconds later, Spider-Man's words come true. It was hiding behind that door, waiting. But it hasn't yet learned how great my strength is. It thinks this will stop me. It's gone. It thinks it finished me off. But I'll have to be more careful next time. The brain never forgets. Once it sees me again, it'll realize the extent of my strength, and it will fight even harder than before. But suddenly... Now is our chance. The brain is gone. Let's get out of here. Yeah, before anyone realizes we caused all the trouble by messing up its controls when we tried to steal it. I knew the brain couldn't have become a menace by itself, but my first job is still to find it and render it harmless. If I could only find a way to reach the control panel, maybe I could figure out that noise down the hall. It must be straight ahead. He, he caught me. He can move faster than I expected. He thinks so fast that he can actually second guess my actions, and his electronic circuits can adjust his mechanical body as fast as he can think. When I exert more pressure, he automatically increases his own power to nullify mine. Then, the living brain suddenly spins Spider-Man around and releases him in an effort to dash him against the wall. He realizes my strength now. He's taking no chances with me. But the masked teenager saves himself by a whipping fast maneuver. Good thing I loaded my vial with enough web fluid this morning. Good old trusty web. It held, stopping me from hitting the wall. And now I'm in my own element. 
Better cling to the ceiling while I plan my next move. Luckily, I'm just out of his reach, but I can't stay up here forever. Say, what's he trying to do? Holy smoke, I'll say, he can think. He's trying to dislodge me by hitting the walls, and he's using that door like a fly swatter. He can think, but he has no conscience. To him, there is no right or wrong. He doesn't even hate me. He just wants to stop me from bothering him. But whether he means it or not, if he connects, it's goodbye Spider-Man. Whatever I'm gonna do, I better do it fast. Well, here goes nothing. If I hold tight enough, he won't be able to reach the wall to pound anymore. But I can't hold on much longer. He's exerting too much pull. He's spinning around, causing me to spin also. That hunk of machine can actually outthink a human brain. How will I ever beat him? He, he shook me loose. Look out below. He's leaving. He feels as if there's nothing I can do to stop him. I'm not worth bothering about anymore. Oh no, some fool kids came back into the school to see what's going on. He's heading towards them. They won't even have a chance. Charlie, get up. Hurry. It's almost on top of us. I've got to reach the brain before it can get to those kids. Old spider strength, if I ever needed you, I need you now. I got him. Now, if I can just reach that control panel. Look, Spider-Man saved us. Yeah, but who's going to save Spider-Man? At least I diverted his attention from those kids. But he's moving so fast, I can't reach his controls. This is the showdown. He won't rest now until I'm completely destroyed. I've got to hope he can't think of a way to do it before I can do something. What a pickle. If I fall off, I'm done for. And if I stay on here, I'll soon be a sitting duck for him. There, I finally reached his control switches. But he's heading for the stairs. I've got seconds to figure these things out. I did it. I flipped the main cutoff switch. He's incapable of further independent action. But he can't stop himself. He's going to crash down those stairs. With me going along for the ride. Can't wiggle off in time. This is a nutty way for a superhero to meet his end. Just one slim chance. If my spider web is strong enough to hold us both. Geronimo! It held. The web held. We're swinging back in again. I stopped him. As then, when the now deactivated living brain finally swings to a halt, the triumphant teenager readjusts his controls, lowering the machine's arms so that he can get free. It was a great ride, pal, but I'm not sorry it's over. Just then, at the other end of the hall. Somebody stop those two. They're responsible for what happened. Down the stairs, quick. We'll lose them in the locker room. But at that moment in the locker room, Flash Thompson regains consciousness. Uh, ow, my head. Parker must have had a brick in his glove when he hit me. Might as well get dressed. I'll have to find some excuse for not beating puny Parker. Drat this knotted shoelace. Footsteps running towards me. W what's up? Who can... Hey! Look out! I thought this place was empty. Oof. Well, I'll be. They plumb knocked themselves out. Wow, look at that. Flash caught both of those guys. Yeah, great, great work, Flash. How'd you do it? Oh, you know me. I just up and I let him have it. Meanwhile, having changed back to his normal identity, Peter Parker gets an idea. This is too good an opportunity to pass up. I just realized, Flash, you're the only one who wasn't around while Spider-Man was fighting the living brain. And you knocked these two burly guys out as easy as pie, and you're just about Spider-Man's size. Say, Parker's right, I never thought of that. And you tried to get the brain's answer to Spider-Man's identity away from me. It all ties in, doesn't it? Knock it off, bookworm. You're imagining things. I'm not Spider-Man. Even if you were, you'd still deny it, wouldn't you? That could be why you lost the fight to Parker, so nobody would suspect who you really are. Sure, everyone knows you could be puny Parker in your sleep. But I, I, I can't... That, that is, I'm, I mean, I, I'm not. Ha, <laughs> to keep it up, Flash will start believing in himself. Later, a light-hearted Peter Parker blithely walks home from school, happily lost his own thoughts. Tomorrow, I'll just say I lost the paper with Spider-Man's identity on it during all the excitement. So that's that. As for Flash, I managed to wallop him without giving myself away. All in all, it's been a mighty pleasant day. Don't go away, friends. More teenage fun follows as Spider-Man mixes it up with the other youthful sensation the human torch. The end. Well guys, that was The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 8. We got to see Peter finally have a fight with Flash Thompson, even though it didn't exactly go in his favor in the end, we could say. And there was sort of a unique villain as just sort of an AI robot. 
There is a secondary kind of extra special side story added on at the end of this comic, but it's just nothing really happens. It's just Spider-Man goes and meets the Human Torch and just kind of has a fight with him and then fights a little bit with the rest of the Fantastic Four and then just kind of buzzes off. Nothing really happens and it's just a side story. It doesn't matter for the overall plot of Spider-Man. It's just a little bit of fan service, so I will not be including it in this video. Hope you guys understand. But nonetheless, we'll see how the story progresses in the next issue. But if you guys enjoyed this this series and want to see it continue, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.